searching for music for your next video? Then you need to check out our list. With amazing new music added daily and one simple license that covers everything. Artlist is the music licensing platform for all creators. Shout it out one more time. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. simple right there. Can you help me declare it over your life? Say, I'm expecting great things.
expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. If you believe it, why don't you release a shout right there? destination in my view the road may be bumpy getting there but I'm pressing through I will enjoy this journey no matter come when may I'll become better and stronger and wiser every day I've got a vision and a purpose a divine destiny it may not look like it right now but faith ain't what I see it is the things I hope Believing that it will come, and no matter how long it takes, I know God's will shall be done. His will is that I prosper. His will is that I win. His will. This is not a time to go off course. This is not a time to lose your focus. Got a word to you for the Lord. And you cannot afford to lose your way. You come too far from where you started. So please don't let
everything you've ever dreamed, everything you prayed for, everything he promised you that you'd get. Waiting on the other side of temptation, waiting on the other side. Shalom, 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 everyone, 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 everyone of you. Thank you all for joining and welcome to another edition of the Harvest Broadcast uh, brought to you uh, by Harvest Temple Ministries, the ministries of Harvest Temple Church of Restoration right here in Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. Hey, I'm Kelvin Dunn, Senior Lead Pastor and Founder of Harvest Temple Church of Restoration uh, right here in Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. I thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening for our Harvest Broadcast. Uh, we try to do this uh, every Sunday around 5 o'clock if the Lord says the same and delays is coming. Uh, and we have been uh, having an awesome, wonderful, uh, wonderful experience, wonderful uh, uh lessons in uh, high expectancy faith uh, we have been our faith has been growing from uh, as the Bible says we are to go from faith to faith we are to go from glory to glory we are to grow and we are growing uh, and we are growing and growing and growing our faith is getting stronger and stronger and stronger uh, tonight we are talking about we're in faith lesson 20 uh, you can uh, go to uh, my Facebook page, uh, you can go to Harvest Temple Ministries uh, or Harvest Temple Church of Restoration Facebook page. Um, pretty much you can catch the majority of these uh, uh, faith lessons. Uh, you can also catch them on our YouTube channel as well. Um, I will, uh, later after the broadcast, uh, I will put a link up to how you can uh, subscribe and you can leave your comments uh, and you can turn on that notification bell so that you can get the latest uh, when we upload uh, videos uh, and various things to our YouTube page as well. So I thank you all for joining. I thank you all for your time. Don't want to delay uh, too much longer. It is, as Mr. Rogers would say, uh, it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood, regardless of the weather, regardless of the situation, regardless of what you're going through in life, long as you got breath in your body, long as you have the activities of your limbs, as long as you have a mind uh, that is ready to be transformed and renewed, uh, and long as you have faith uh, that the impossible is possible, listen, long as you got all that it is a beautiful day in your neighborhood it is a beautiful day uh in your life so listen let's get into uh faith lesson 20. uh faith lesson 20. our lesson topic 
uh, or lesson title for tonight's lesson um, is Moving Towards My Destiny. Moving Towards My Destiny. Uh, shared with you all uh, kind of briefly last week, um, we had a uh, family reunion and uh, closed it out uh, with a uh, Sunday morning prayer breakfast. Awesome, awesome prayer breakfast. It was an awesome, wonderful time uh, spending it with my wife's side of the family. Um, had an awesome, wonderful time from Friday night to Saturday uh, at the cookout. Uh, till all the way up to Sunday morning uh, and even afterwards it was awesome 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 and we uh, shared with you all last week it's it's on the uh, it's on the page you can go back and check it out uh, we talked about um, uh, we talked about leaving a legacy and we talked about what would your legacy be uh, or what will your legacy be uh, when you transition and uh, Kind of still in that same vein, in that same area. Uh, been, uh, I was watching, I was re-watching. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend, I highly encourage. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend and highly encourage that you get your hands on your copy today of The Avengers Endgame. Uh, awesome movie. A lot of revelation in that movie. Um, and just rewatching it because I, I had the chance to uh, catch it uh, in theaters. Uh, I caught the, the preview uh, before it actually came out that Friday. I went that Thursday with some, uh, some co-workers and friends of mine and uh, got to watching that. I watched that for my, for my, as a birthday gift. Uh, had an awesome, wonderful time then. Had an even wonderful, uh, awesome time on last night. Uh, re-watching it again and uh, was watching it in a particular scene uh, if you haven't seen it I don't want to spoil it but there was a particular scene uh, in the movie and uh, they, they the, uh, the villain uh, was mm, kind of on his uh, prideful high horse or he was at his his peak moment he was at his uh, his glorious uh, point in his life, and he was he made mentions uh, about the word destiny. He made mention uh, about the word uh, in a sense legacy. He made mentions of these words, and just watching that movie and watching how it played out and what happened, uh, it uh, it led me to just start praying. Uh, and I kind of started reading and was just kind of searching and and the Holy Spirit said uh, I was in the right I was going in the right direction uh, as far as doing this lesson on uh, moving towards my destiny uh, I want to encourage somebody I want to help somebody I want to get somebody uh, out of that stuck position somebody uh, out of uh, their comfort zone Thank you, Holy Spirit. Get somebody out of that comfort zone and get you moving closer to your destiny. Get you moving closer uh, to your dreams becoming reality. Get you closer to those visions uh, becoming a reality. So we're talking about moving towards my destiny. And our lesson scripture uh, for tonight will come out of the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, Harvest Temple Church Restoration. Shalom to each and every one of you all. Thank you for joining. Y'all know how we roll HTC. Go ahead, get your Bible, uh, get your notepad, get your pen, something to write on, something to write with. If you driving, listen, don't be trying to take notes. Uh, and, and, and I don't want no accidents. I don't need no calls about uh, any accidents. Uh, but I pray grace and mercy, traveling mercy upon and around each and every one of you all. Uh, right now, praying that you get to your destination. Uh, and if you're going back to your original point of origin from which you left from, I pray safe traveling mercies back to that and that everything be better than it was when you left out. But if you are in the comfort of your home or if you're in the comfort of on your lunch break, 
uh, whatsoever the case may be, if you can take notes, I highly suggest that you take notes. I want to give you uh, seven points. Uh, I want to give you seven points uh, that will help get you started to moving towards your destiny. Seven points. And after that, I will be out of your way. I will be out of here if the Lord says the same and delays his coming. Uh, the scripture lesson is coming out of Ecclesiastes, the sixth chapter, verse 9 and 10. And we're going to read this uh, from the New Living Translation. I want to read this from the New Living Translation. Shalom. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 9 and 10 from the New Living Translation. And it reads as thus. It says, Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Let me say that again. Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. In other words, let me help somebody out. Let's stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. Okay? Let's, let, let's stop uh, uh, trying to figure out how the Jones and the Smiths and the Robertsons and, and, and the everybody else's is getting this, that, and the other, and how they're coming about getting this, that, and the other. Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Goes, verse 9 goes on to say, Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless. Watch this. Just dreaming about it. You can sit here and you can tell me all day. You can tell me till you blue in the face. You can tell me till I'm purple in the face. You can tell me till we're both green uh, in the face that you are the most, you are the greatest of all time, that you are a legend. You can tell me that you're the best at what you do. But if you do not, if all you're doing is just telling me dreams and you're not even trying to put anything in action, you're not trying to apply uh, the, the gift, the talent, the ability, the grace that God has bestowed and given unto you, if you ain't putting none of that into practice towards what you telling me that you are a legend, you are the greatest, you, you, you're a goat, the greatest of all time, you tell me all of that, but if you're not doing anything applicable to, to show me that this statement is true, then you're just dreaming about nice things and it's meaningless. It's like you it's like running out here, it's just like running out here, running outside, running around, and, and you just running around and somebody asks you, hey man, what you up to? What you doing? Oh, I'm just running around chasing the wind. Hello, somebody. Verse 10. Verse 10 says, everything has already been decided. It was known long ago what each person would be. It was decided long ago what God has intended for you to be. God knows. Jeremiah 29 11, he says, I know the plans that I have for you. The plans are to prosper you. The plans are to give you peace, not to do any harm. The plans are to, 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 to love on you. The plans is, is not to, to, to offset and, and, and bring destruction and, and, and chaos and, and all this that you want to throw on God and say that it's God. It's God's fault. It's God doing it. No, God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Listen, before the foundations of the world, before God spoke the world into existence, before he said, let there be light, and it was, before he even said that, guess what? He spoke you into existence. He spoke you into existence. I ain't got time to get into that, but he spoke you into existence before you was a twinkle in your father's eye. Me, you, and everybody, every human being on the face of this earth, we hung out in the spirit realm with God. Why? Because we were created in his image and in his likeness. And to be created in his image and in his likeness, the Bible says that they that worship him must worship him. How? In spirit and in truth. And the Bible goes on to say that God is what? God is spirit. God is spirit. So God created us 
in spirit being formed first. And then he put us in these earth suits when he blew the ruha, the breath of life into the nostrils of the clay uh, body form that, that he shaped and fashioned and made out of the, the dust, the ground, the mud. And he formed that body and then he blew. He, he took you and he blew you, your spirit man, into that body. And that body became a life giving soul, a life, a life being. It became a life giving spirit that became a life being. Hello, somebody. So everything has already, everything about your life, everything has been predestined. Watch this. Let me help you out. Let me, let me, let me give you a little bit more insight to this. Everything from the time that you step, that from the time that the doctor spanked you on your behind, uh, Really, I can go. I can go back further than that. From the time that you were conceived in your mother's womb until the time you came out to where you are right now, there is a timeline. There is a chronos, a chronological uh, timeline, time measured that has uh, that is set. And everything, I, every achievement, every accomplishment, every uh, hiccup, every mistake, every failure. Everything that you've gone through and that you're going through right now, God already knew. He knows the end. He went all the way to the end of your life and already saw what the end result was, saw what you were to become, saw what you are going to be. He already knows that at the end result, and he just came all the way backwards and worked that plan out from the end to the beginning while you were living from the beginning to the end. So he already knows he already knows, and every little hiccup, every little accomplishment, every little thing that goes on, he already knows that it's going to happen. He already knows. That's why the Bible says that he makes a way of escape. Whoo! He makes a way of escape. It's already a plan in place. It's already an escape route in place. You just have to make the choice. You just have to realize that you were chosen. You were chosen before the foundations of the world. It was preordained. It was predestined. And God already had all this set up. He already knew all this was going to happen. He already knew what was going to transpire, but he was, he, but he, he planned out little spots where you would hear his voice, little spots where somebody would come and encourage you, little spots where somebody would come and motivate you, little spots where somebody would come and, 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 and like, like somebody being stuck in the mud or stuck in the sand and they're just constantly just sitting there spinning tires and ain't going nowhere. And then all of a sudden somebody comes and, and, and they latch on and, and they pull them out. God has all that already in place and everything that goes on, Watch this. The Bible says that he redeems, that he will redeem the time. The Bible says that, that everything that the locust has eaten, God will restore. Now, in that time frame or in that, that passage of scripture and in that time, uh, in the context of what he was talking about, he was dealing with farmers. He was dealing with those who, who understood uh, what the locusts come to do. And so in this day and time, uh, what he redeems is time. Hello, somebody. He redeems the time. So all that stuff that you feel like that you done messed up and, and that you, you just done blew all the time and you just done messed this up and this, this, and this, and you're now on track, you're now on course, you're now moving towards your destiny. Now you're moving towards, uh, you're making deposits into uh, your legacy and you got this going on. So you're thinking that all that time, is null and void. All that time you screwed up, you messed up, all that time you spent playing around, God is redeeming. He packs all that into that timeline because the Bible says that he, he, that all things, thank you, Holy Spirit, all things, everything in your life right now, the good, the bad, the ugly, all things work together for the good. He mixes it in and he works it in 
and he works it out to where he gets the glory. He gets the credit because he is God. He's showing you, look, I was there. Yeah, that, that happened, but watch this. We can redeem the time on that. Listen, here's another chance. Here's another opportunity. Hello, somebody. So everything has already been decided. It was known long ago what each person would be. So the scripture goes on to say in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, uh, verse 10, chapter 6, it goes on to say, so there is no, no need, there is no use arguing with God about your destiny. As I said, we're talking about moving towards my destiny, moving towards your destiny destiny. Listen, in order to operate in high expectancy faith that we have been talking about since January, uh, January 1, all the way up until now, every faith lesson uh, we have, we have taught every faith lesson that we have preached, every faith lesson uh, that you can get your hands on. We are talk, we've talked about, we broke this down, we've said it, we've talked about high expectancy faith. So in order to operate at this level, to in order to operate at this level of high expectancy faith, I need you to remember simply this. I need you to remember that great. I need you to remember to remember that great thing. If you look throughout the history of humanity, you look out, look at through the history of this world. No matter what it is, the airplane, the telephone. Uh, the cell phone, uh, the camera, uh, whatever you can think of that is considered a great thing. Whether it be a person, whether it's a place, or if whether it's a thing. Whatever it is that you consider to be great, I need you to remember this, that that great thing never comes from comfort zones. It never came from a comfort zone. See, they had you. You, you got you gonna have to put in some 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 blood, sweat, and some tears. You you gonna have to you gonna have to get a little little greaming grim greaming grimy. You gonna have to get a little dirty. Uh, you gonna have to get a little dirt under your nails. Hello, somebody. You you gonna have to use your brain uh, a little bit. You gonna have to uh, renew your mind. You gonna have to step out of that comfort zone. You gonna have to step out. Uh, uh, of, of waiting for somebody to come to you when that person is sitting somewhere waiting for you to show up at a particular time at a particular point and the Holy Spirit and God keeps prompting you by the Holy Spirit. Go, I need you to go here. I need you to make this left. I need you to make this right. I need you to stop right here at this coffee shop. That is in line with your destiny. And you say, no, nah, I ain't got time. I got to keep it moving. No, I got to do this. Ah, no, no, no. And you're missing these opportunities, but God can redeem the time. He's a redeemer of time. But as you start to get a little older, you'll start to realize that things could have been a whole lot better if you would have just stopped and listened and made different decisions and made different choices other than the ones that you made. Hello, somebody. So remember... That great thing, whatever that great thing is, never comes from comfort zones. So if you feel like you have been caught uh, in a comfort zone, if you feel like you are stagnant, you feel like you're stuck uh, in a place uh, at this moment, if you feel like uh, you just sitting there and, like I said earlier, you feel like you're in, in a mud hole, you feel like you uh, are, are in a pothole, uh, uh, somewhere and you just, and you sinking and you just spinning your wheels, but you're not moving any closer to your goals. Then I want to talk to you. I want to encourage you. Listen, my job as a pastor, I know a lot of people would say, uh, that, uh, you know, the scripture says that, that we are to feed the sheep. Well, what sense, what, what sense is it if you're feeding the sheep and, 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 and all they're doing is just sitting there getting fat? See, I believe also as we're feeding the sheep, I believe we should be feeding the sheep and making the sheep hungry. Hello, somebody. I think we need to not just feed the sheep, 
until they're fat and plump. But I think we need to feed the sheep and make the sheep hungry or make them even more hungrier that they come back wanting more. And I pray that this teaching, I pray that this lesson and all of the other lessons in, in the High Expectancy Faith series, I pray that all these lessons, uh, that they give you practical insight and that they will help you to apply this to your life. And I pray that this lesson will give you practical insight on how to move from where you are to move toward your destiny. That's my goal. That's, that's, that's my goal. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you right now. We bless you for this opportunity. We bless you for this time. We bless you uh, for, most of all, for your word. Father, I ask that you give us ears to hear. Give us an ear of the learner, a disciplined ear to hear your voice when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. I ask that you, uh, that you give us uh, ears to hear, that our minds are alert and receptive, and that our heart our heart, our spiritual heart, uh, is uh, acceptable and, and prone and ready uh, for this word to drop down in it, that it will renew our minds, that it will change our minds, it will change our life, it will change our behavior, it will change our character into your likeness, into your character uh, of your son, Christ Jesus, whom you sent to die on the cross for our sins. I pray, Lord, that we will have and begin to operate in the mind of your son, Christ, that we will have the mind of Christ, that we will have the characteristics, the love, uh, the forgiveness, uh, the mercy, the long suffering. We will have and we will show these traits and these attributes uh, that are like you, Father, that we will begin to show them to others. Let them see your light. Let them see you in us. Let them see you in us. Let them see Jesus in us. Not just today on a Sunday, not just on a Wednesday, but every day. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. I plead the blood of Yahshua right now over the airways, over the audio, the video, over the technology, over everything and everybody. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will arrest uh, every soul that needs to be in the vicinity of this teaching right now. I ask that you take full control right now. Uh, I ask that you have your way. Have your way with the worshipers. Be mighty in the worshipers even right now. I just thank you right now, most gracious and heavenly Father. I give you all the honor, glory, and praise. Uh, I just thank you. I thank you. Holy Spirit, we say good evening to you. We say good evening. Have your way. Rest, rule, abide, and reign throughout this broadcast, throughout uh, this lesson, throughout our lives. Father, let them see your love. Let them see your truth. Let them see you and not myself, not I, not my will, but let your will be done in this lesson, in my life. I graciously thank you. I bless you. All this we ask and pray in the matchless and mighty name of your son, Yeshua the Messiah. We say amen, amen, amen. We're talking about moving towards your destiny, moving towards your destiny. So, in order to get you from being stuck, to get you from just spinning your wheels and uh, not getting any closer to achieving your goals, uh, we are going to talk about and give you some, some practical uh, principles that will get you uh, closer and energize. I, I hope that it energizes and motivates you to move towards your destiny. Now the word destiny is defined as your future or the preordained path of your life. And like I said in the beginning of this, uh, before the foundation of the world, before anything in on this earth was even created and spoken to existence, God had already chosen us. He had already chosen humanity to be 
uh, to create in his image and in his likeness. Uh, so our destiny, uh, our path of life is already laid out. It's already laid out. We just have to choose which path that we decide to follow. We have to choose which way we want to go. We have to choose. Life is choice driven. God did not create us as robots, but he created humanity and he gave us free will. He gave us the ability to choose. Choose. The Bible says, choose you this day whom you will serve. Uh, the Bible says, choose blessings or choose cursings. The Bible says, it goes on to say, I hope that you choose, that you would choose and accept life. That you would choose and accept the blessings. Hello, somebody. God already has a plan. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the plan that I have for you. It is to give you a hope, to give you a future, to give you uh, uh, love, to 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 prosper you, not to do you any harm. Man, hello, somebody. So uh, I want to give you seven practical ways, seven practical ways. We're going to give you seven practical ways uh, that will uh, motivate you, energize you, inspire you to move towards your destiny. Number one, the number one practical way that I want to list is simply this. Uh, practical way number one. Use the ability you got. Use what you got. And, and, and if you're not using what you got, show me what you're working with. Because God has given to every person, God has given us an ability, a talent, uh, talents, uh, he has given us grace to do what we do. He has, he has equipped you. There is something down in you that you probably have not fully tapped into uh, your potential and your purpose of greatness. You probably ain't really tapped. You probably ain't even scratched the surface and realized that that is that you have a gift and you have an ability. And it ain't always uh, being able to. It ain't always about being athletic. It ain't always uh, about uh, uh, having a call on your life. Uh, to to stand behind a pulpit and preach. Uh, somebody has has maybe gifted in writing. Uh, somebody may be gifted in drawing. Somebody uh, may be gifted in writing songs. You probably can't sing a lick, but you can. You probably hear a tune and a melody, and that you pin some words to that melody, and you you need to get that out there. Hello, somebody. I'm talking to somebody. Uh, Use the ability you got. That is the first point. Use the ability you got. Uh, it was President Theodore Roosevelt who said, uh, do what you can with what you have, where you are. Theodore Roosevelt, President Theodore Roosevelt said, do what you can with what you have, where you are. Use the ability you got. You should always start where you are with what you got at the moment listen you 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 try you want to you 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 trying to get your business going you trying to get that business going and you trying to work out all the kinks and you trying to work out all the details you trying to work out uh everything and and, and you haven't even uh sat down and simply done do did some business cards. Uh, you haven't sat down and, and took took this opportunity and took this moment just to start building and putting together a little simple website to get you out there. Start with start with where you are. Start where you are. Start with what you have. Use the ability that you got at this moment, right where you are. Don't be don't 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 be trying to trying to get a multi million billion dollar business uh, tomorrow or by tomorrow. No, it's a process. But the process you need to start, and you need to start beginning the process. You need to start using the ability that you got. You need to start with where you are. Start with what you got, 
and start at this moment right now, this time that you have been given right now. See, you you, you got to realize, you got to understand that God has given uh, every human being, that every human being, we have been given a God-given ability to perform at a level that we never previously thought possible. God has given you an ability to do something without any stress, strain, uh, any problem. It comes so natural. It's an ability. It's a gift. It's a talent. It's a, it is a grace that comes over you that you do. And, and it's, it's like, like getting up in the morning and, and going and using the bathroom and washing your hands and, 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 and wash your face, brush your teeth. Uh, it's as, it comes as easy as uh, putting on your clothes. It's, it's as easy as putting your pants on one leg at a time. It's as easy as putting your shirt on. This ability, this gift, this talent that God has given to you, it comes so natural. It flows so easy. But in, and it is a God-given ability to perform at a level that you never previously thought possible. But you see, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 6, it says that God has given each of us the ability to do certain things. How? Well. He has given us the ability to do certain things well. Not haphazardly, not half-stepping. God has given each of us the ability to do something well. This empowerment is a gift from the Holy Spirit. Because in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14, uh, it tells us to guard well the splendid God-given ability that you received as a gift from the Holy Spirit who lives where? Within you. And so I am reminded about uh, the scripture in Matthew's a very familiar passage of scripture in Matthew, the 25th chapter, and right around verse 14, I believe it is, uh, around verse 14, it talks about and it tells the story of uh, the three servants who were given talents, who were given abilities, who were given uh, these gifts, uh, who was given something to do that they was given they was bestowed something that comes and flows natural to them. And each of the three servants, they were given uh, these talents according to their abilities. And see, with, with the ability that God has given to you, there comes a responsibility because you are responsible to use that ability. You are responsible uh, if you don't use that ability, guess what? You still are responsible because you're going to have to stand before God. You're going to have to give an account uh, of that talent and that ability that God has given to you and graced you with. You got to stand before him when he asks you, uh, what did you do? Why didn't you use that gift I gave you? Why didn't you use that talent? Why didn't you use that grace I bestowed upon you to do X, Y, Z? Why, why you didn't? Why? Why? What happened? See, what you need to realize is that what you have at this moment, what you have at this moment is what you can handle. The ability that God has given to you, the ability that God has bestowed upon you with that responsibility. Y'all know, y'all don't, if y'all haven't seen, y'all should, y'all, y'all should know by now the, the, the movie and, and, and the coin phrase in Spider-Man, uh, where, where, where the grandfather tells Peter Parker, uh, you know, with, with great powers come great responsibility. In other words, what he's telling him is with this great ability that you have comes great responsibility. And with that great responsibility to that ability that God has given you also comes accountability. I ain't got time to get into that, but I'm just laying this out for you. I'm just laying this out for you. I, I, you need to realize that you are accountable you are accountable uh, to God to use the ability because you're responsible for using or not using that ability. Hello, somebody. I'm trying to help somebody move towards their destiny. 
What you have at the moment is what you can handle. But I believe, more importantly, God knows that you can handle more with a little more understanding. The reason why I say that is, remember, you start with what you have. You start where you are, and you make the best of it. And then you don't complain about what you don't have. You use what has been given to you. Use the ability that you have. Use what you got. And you don't complain about what you don't have, but you use what you do have. Use it at this particular moment. Use it. Begin to use it right now. See, it's just like in the parable of the talent. See, he, 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 gave, uh, he gave one person... Uh, five talents. He gave one person three talents and he gave another person one talent based upon the ability of what they could handle, the capacity. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The capacity of what they could handle is, is how they were given these talents, how they were given these abilities was based upon their capacity. Mm, wow. Wow based upon their capacity. And this is why I say that I believe that God knows that you can handle uh, handle a little more when you get a little more understanding. So, once you start with what you have, once you start where you are, right now at this moment, and once you start to make the best of what you got, not what you don't have, make the best of what you got, where you are, with what you got right now, and you don't complain about what you don't have, and that you focus on using what you do have. Now, what I need you, what I want you to do is in the midst of that, Sit down and create a plan to get you from where you are to where you want to be. Now you need to map out a plan. Now you need to form a plan. Now you need to set a vision. As the Bible tells us in Habakkuk uh, chapter 2 verse 2 uh, where God says to write the vision and engrave it so plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes may be able to read it easily and quickly as he hastens by. Uh-huh. See, see, you need to start, you need to create that plan. You need to take that dream, take that vision, put it on paper, because that is making it the beginning process of making it a reality. And every day you get up, you need to look at that plan, look at that vision. And if you have to, somebody out there might need to make a checklist. And that you go through and check off what you have accomplished, how you have gotten a little bit closer to that plan. Check it off. Because we're talking about moving towards our destiny. And so you need to create a plan from where you are to where you want to be. And the Bible tells us in Habakkuk 2, uh, 2, chapter 2, verse 2, it says to write the vision, engrave it, get out a piece of paper, write it down. Somebody probably, it, it reminds me, watch this, let me give this example. It reminds me of the story that I, I listened to uh, about Steve Harvey, the comedian, and how Steve Harvey was in elementary school. And Steve says that uh, that the teacher had asked all the kids in his class, uh, including himself, to write down what they wanted to be when they grew up, to write a plan, to write a vision, to put it on paper so plainly that everyone who passes may be able to read it easily and quickly as they pass by. So she, she, she had the right concept. But at certain points, at certain individuals, she had uh, the wrong motive. Watch this. Uh, Steve says he, he wrote on his piece of paper, all he wrote very simply in elementary school, he wrote on his piece of paper, 
I want to be on TV. Now, some people might say, man, that that's, that can happen at any time, anywhere. You, you can get on TV anytime now. You, you can sit, sit and, and get on YouTube and you, you count on TV. Yeah, in a sense, but in, in his, his day and time, it was all about getting on television set. It was all about making it to the television, making it to the big screen, as, as, as they would say back in the day. Making it to that platform. And he wrote on a piece of paper. He didn't say I wanted to be the most funniest. He didn't say I wanted to be the 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 the, the greatest comedy uh, comedian of all time. He didn't list none. All he list very simply was I want to be one day I want to be on TV. And so the teacher was coming by. She was collecting all of the papers. And as she was collecting the papers, she looking over and she's reading uh, the papers. And, and just kind of looking over at what the kids have wrote down. And she sees that some have wrote they want to be a doctor. Some says they, uh, little Jimmy says he wanted to be, uh, uh, he wanted to be a, a, a police officer. Uh, this one says he wanted to do that. And, and this one says they want to do this. And so she picks up Steve's paper and she looks at Steve's paper. And all it says is, I want to be on TV. I want to be on TV. She takes the paper and sticks it under the very bottom of the pile. And so as she's collected all of the papers, she goes back to her desk and she calls each student up to stand up and to say to the class, to turn to their, they turn to their, their peers, to turn to their classmates and tell them, what they want to become. Watch this. We're talking about moving towards your destiny. It's already preordained. It's already preset. It's already uh, been set in motion before God spoke and said, let there be light over the earth. And so the teacher looks and she calls each one. And so finally she gets to Steve's paper and she, she tells Steve to stand up and come to the front of the class. Oh man, you, you know, an elementary school student, you know, if, 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 if you know, they've been, been itching and, 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 and just seeking to get that, that, that chance to stand at the front of the class proudly, to stand at the front of the class and 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 it'd be their moment to shine, as they say. This is their moment. This is his moment. This is his time that he gets to release into the atmosphere publicly what he wants to do when he becomes older, what he wants to do in life. Does he want to become a police officer? Does he want to be a doctor? Does he want to be a lawyer? He says, I want to be on television. And so the teacher has him to come to the front of the class and she said, Steve, tell the class what you wrote on this paper. And Steve looks around and looks at the teacher and kind of puffs his chest out a little bit and stands there and says, I want to be on television. So there was a hush in Jerusalem. So the kids are whispering, some giggling, some laughing. And so the teacher looks at Steve and says, this is the most ridiculous thing you could ever put. Why did you write this? Quit playing games. Quit, quit being so sarcastic and stop being a smart butt. What is your problem? I'm going to send you to the principal's office. This is not the assignment. Tell the class what you want to be when you grow up. Steve says, I said it. I want to be on television. She said, okay, you want to continue with this nonsense. You want to continue with this foolishness. Listen, I want to pin this note to your shirt. I'm going to call your mother. I'm going to call your father. I'm going to tell them that you're in class cutting up, showing out, and I'm going to send this, this letter, this note that you've made. I'm going to send this home to your parents so they can see the foolishness that you're doing here in class, that you, uh, you have failed to accomplish the assignment that I have set forth. And I know there's some folks out there that has some that has shut some folks' dreams down. I know there's some people 
This is why you got to watch teachers nowadays. I, I, I just got to put this out there. Teachers, I'm trying to help you move towards your destiny because you might not realize that you probably have stunt somebody's destiny uh, from coming to pass. You may have uh, been a dream killer and didn't know. Then there are some that have that are dream killers and you do know that what you do. But I want to tell you, I want to warn you, be very careful, be very mindful out there. Because these are some, they are exceptional, special kids. And if you don't know how to handle them and you try to put them in the box and you're trying to keep them coloring in the lines, you may be missing something. You may be missing an opportunity. You may be missing something very unique and very special. And you may be causing them to clam up, to shut down their dreams, to shut down their vision, to shut down because they feel like they're in a box and they feel like that it won't happen and they feel like that 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 an adult uh, is not uh, not trying to push them into their destiny that they're trying to keep them. But it's preordained. It's, it, it's bound to happen. Man, whoo, I, I just thought about that, 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 that one particular point in the movie. But Steve goes home. Back to the story. I, I, back to the story. Steve goes home. Uh, his mother meets him right at the door, and she looks down at him. She said, what, I got a call from the school today. What's this foolishness? What's this nonsense? Uh, the teacher telling me that you playing games, and, 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 and what, 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 what's this note? What is this? She takes it off, and, it, and she said, what is this? He said, we had an assignment. The teacher said, to write on the paper what you want it to be when you grow up. And so she said, I want, he said, I, I got in front, she made me come to the front of the class and I told the class I want to be on TV. And so the teacher sends him home after she pretty much belittles him, after she literally crushes his dreams at that moment, she, she goes on to tell him and ask him questions. Who who you know on TV? Who in this class, who in this school have you ever seen on TV? Who in your neighborhood have you ever seen on TV? And Steve replied, nobody. And so the teacher is a dream killer. He goes home and the nearly exact same questions comes out of the mouth of his mother. Well, who you know on TV? Who have you seen on TV? Who around here do you know that's on TV right now? He said, nobody, mama, but one day I'm going to be on TV. And she said, okay, you keep up with this foolishness and this nonsense. She said, I got something for you. I'm going I'm to I'm pass you off to your daddy. And you better well get ready to get your butt whooped because your daddy ain't going to stand for this foolishness because the teacher gave you an assignment. You didn't do the assignment. They looking at this one-sidedly. They looking at this tunnel vision. They're not looking at this with the blinders off. Hello, somebody. See, see, they, 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 they're not looking at this as a dreamer. They're not looking at this as a visionary. Hello, somebody. So Steve's father gets home. And Steve's father is trying to figure out what's going on, what the problem is. And so Steve is already preparing himself, knowing that his father is the judge, the jury, and the executioner. He's already preparing to go get a butt whooping. So he's he's just waiting for his cue. He's waiting for this father to tell him that it's time for you to go get your butt whooped. He's waiting for that moment. He's waiting because he, he just has this feeling that his father is going to hear what his mother's saying. He, he's going to Take sides with the dream killing teacher. He's gonna take sides with the dream killing parent. He's gonna become a dream killing villain and continue down this path. So Steve is preparing himself for this butt whooping. So his father looks at the paper and his father says, So what's all the fuss about? And his mother says, Oh, he had an assignment and he failed to do the assignment. He said, Well, what was the assignment? He asked Steve, and Steve said, the teacher said to take out a piece of paper and write down on the paper what we want it to be. And he said, and so you wrote, you want to be on television? He said, yes. 
And so the father looks at the mother. The mother's going off. She just, she, she's kirking out. She, she's just going off. She is trying to instigate a butt whooping. And the father says, well, what's wrong with that? Oh, man, Steve's whole continent changes. His whole demeanor is now back uplifted. His, his, his dream is that much closer in his heart and in his mind to becoming a reality because he has a supporting role. He has a supporting cast in his father. And so his father said, man, come on, go, go on to the room. So now Steve thinking, well, wait a minute. I thought dad was on my side, but man, I guess I'm still going to get a butt with him for something. So let me just go ahead and go ahead and get ready and, and, and just go ahead and just, just take my punishment. And so he goes into the room and the father says, listen, the father says, this is what you, this is what you wrote on the paper. He said, yes. He said, all right, I tell you what. He said, I want you to take this, this paper that you wrote that you want to be on television. He said, I want you to take that. Stick that in your top dresser drawer. I need y'all to hear this. He said, I want you to take that, stick it in the top, in your top dresser drawer. He said, and every morning you get up, he said, I want you to open that drawer, take out that piece of paper. He said, I want you to stand in front of that mirror and say that one day I want to be on television. He said, stick it back in your drawer, go to school, go about your day. He said, when you come home and you get ready for bed, he said, I want you to take it out that drawer. I want you to take it out the drawer. I want you to look in that mirror and, and, and see yourself and say, one day I want to be on television. And he said, as far as that assignment goes, he said, as far as that dream killing teacher, he said, I want you to take out another piece of paper and write on that piece of paper. I want to be a police officer. Turn that into that teacher and make her happy. Every day, Steve said he did this. Guess what? Steve Harvey. Kings of comedy, comedian, actor, motivational speaker. You can see Steve Harvey on TV five days out of the week. Probably more than that now. His dream became a reality. He wrote his vision down. He had a plan. He wrote it down. And he made it so plain. That everyone, that every time he passed by it, he picked it up, he read it. And it became a reality. We are moving toward our destiny. I'm trying to inspire. I'm trying to enlighten. I'm trying to encourage. I'm trying to uh, uh, get somebody going. I'm trying to get you motivated. I'm trying to get you energized to moving towards your destiny. And the reason why I said all that, the reason why I said that story is simply because of this. Our perception, our mental image determines our reality. Woo! Our perception, our mental image, what do you see yourself as? What are you saying about yourself? See, it ain't about the haters. It ain't about the naysayers. It ain't about the critics. It ain't about what folks are saying. See, it's, see, Jesus, oh, Rabbi Shanda. See, Jesus heard all of that going on. And he came to the disciples and he said to his disciples, he said, I, I, I hear all this stuff going on around me. He says, he said, let me just ask y'all two questions. He said, I need to ask y'all two questions because these two questions are based upon your mental image, which determines your reality. It's your perception. He said, what is your perception of me? He says, who do the folks, who do men say that I am? Well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're one of the prophets. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're this. Some say you're that. He said, okay, yeah, that's what I'm hearing. He said, that's their mental image image. That's their perception of who I am to them. He says, so let me bring this closer to home. Who do you say that I am? Oh, it was a hush in Jerusalem. Who do you say that I am? Who? Listen, the Holy Spirit is telling me, I hear it. I hear it. Who do you say that you are? Are you saying that you are what the folks outside 
of you, the folks that, that, that you are around, the, the environment that you in, are you what they say you are? Are you saying that? Who do you say that you are? Because you know what they saying that you are. But who do you say that you are? Who do you say that God says that you are? So Jesus asked him, who do you say that I am? And it was Peter who got the revelation straight from the throne of heaven and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, oh, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal that unto you, but my father by the spirit. Oh, man. Whoo. Our perception, our mental image determines our reality. In other words, simply plain as, as I can put it is simply as this. One change in thought. One change in your thought leads to a change in your destiny. Woo! Let me say this again. Hello, somebody. One change in your thought leads to a change in your destiny. Your mental image. Who do you say that you are? Who do you say? Do you say what God says about you? Or, or are you saying what others are saying about you? Because the Bible tells me in Proverbs that as a man thinks, in his heart, so is he. In other words, when you think what they say about you and you begin to confess that about yourself, that is what you become. As long as you're not confessing what they're saying about you and you confessing what God says, who you are, and it lines up with what God says about you, that is what you will become. That is who you will be. But if you're sitting there talking and you're sitting there listening to the haters, you're sitting there listening to the naysayers, you're sitting there listening to the critics, you're sitting there listening to folk who really don't know your story. And they running, they yapping at the gums and don't know your story. They don't know your, they don't know your, they don't know the history. They don't know his story. They don't know how he stepped on the scene and how he changed your story and got all the glory. Hello, somebody. Whoo, man. Oh, I'm trying to get through this. Good God Almighty. So listen, one change in thought leads to a change in your destiny. One final point as you begin making progress, as you begin to make strides on your journey uh, towards your destiny, that you will soon discover that you can achieve much more than you first thought yourself capable of achieving. See, the Bible tells me in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, verses three through four, uh, it says that for it says uh, for I testify that they gave as much as they were able. This is the this is the new this is the NIV version uh, that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. In other words, once you start using what you got and you start using what you got where you are right now, you will discover an amazing fact that you are able to do and accomplish more than you ever thought possible. If nothing else in this lesson, I want you to get this. I want you to write this down. I want this to be part of your, your, your daily vision. You, I want this to be part of your, uh, your daily uh, uh, motivation, your daily energize. This, this is, this is, this is the, the, the energy, the surge. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the jump start. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is the jump start. I want you to write down. And I want you 
So every day, I want you to get up and confess this. Very simple. I want you to write this down. I want you to write this statement down. HTC family, HTC folk, I want you to write this down. I'm gonna pull. I will post this. Uh, I will post this. I will post this once we uh, we are in. We're done with this. I will post this. I will post this. But I want you to write this down. And I see my administrative helpmate, my queen, is on line. Thank you, my love. I love you. Uh, appreciate you. Much love to you. Write this down. It says. Write this statement. I want y'all to pin this statement. Put it on, on your refrigerator. Put it on the bathroom mirror. Uh, put it on the bedroom door. Uh, both sides. So coming and going. Put it on the, the back of the, the your entrance and your entrance door. Uh, put it in the car with you. But write this statement down. Word for word. Write this statement down. Simply says this. Once I begin to use what I've got where I am at I will discover an amazing fact I am able to do and accomplish even more than I ever thought possible. Let me say that again for you. Once I begin to use what I've got. In other words, once you begin to use that ability that God has given you, once you begin to tap into using uh, that gift, that talent uh, that God has given to you, once you begin to use that right where you are once you begin to use what you got where i am at no matter where you are in life right now no matter what point uh you're at in your life no matter if you if 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 you're moving on your journey if you stagnant on on this journey if you stuck if you're in a comfort zone Begin to use the ability that God has given to you. Use what you got. Once I begin to use what I got, where I am at, I will discover an amazing fact. I am able to do and accomplish even more than I ever thought possible. And it leads me to point number two. Point number two. Point number one, for those of us that's just joining, point number one, use the ability you got. Use the ability that you got. Use the ability, use what you got. Use what you got right where you are. Begin to use it right now. Use that ability. Begin to use it. Start it right now. If it's just simply making business cards, do it. If it's just simply uh, putting, you know, putting together a website uh, for that business, do it. If it's sitting down just for a few minutes uh, at a certain point of, of a particular day in the week, to, to start uh, putting words, uh, inspirational, motivational, uh, inspiring words together for a book, uh, uh, for, for a blog, for a vlog. Whatever the case is, begin to use that ability right now where you are. Begin to use it right now. And it leads me to point number two. Point number two is this. What are you doing when the boss is not looking? We're talking about moving towards our destiny, moving towards my destiny. What am I doing when the boss is not looking? And we're talking about 
uh, we're still talking about the three servants uh, and the talents, the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25. Uh, you see, two of the three servants in this particular parable, they did whatever was necessary to earn interest and double the talents that they were given. You see, the third servant buried the one talent that he was given. He buried that talent and probably went fishing every day. Probably went and probably went hanging out and, and partying at the club every day. Probably went uh, hanging out with the fellas, hanging with the girls uh, every day. Probably just didn't think nothing of that, that, that talent. Wasting talent. I tell y'all the most valuable, the most valuable, the most wealthiest place in this entire world is the graveyard. I need y'all to think about this. I need y'all to see this. The graveyard is the most wealthiest place. It's more wealthier than, than, than the Swiss banks. It's more wealthier than, than, than the gold that's supposed to be at Fort Knox that probably really ain't there uh, somewhere else. But it's, it's more valuable than the diamonds that they mine and find in Africa. It's, it's more, more wealthier than any stock bond uh, oil refinery, uh, anything of that nature, the graveyard is the most wealthiest place. Why? Why, Pastor K, are you sitting here telling me that the graveyard is the most wealthiest place in all of, of the world? Because it's where you're going to find the most buried talent. Not gonna, I'm not going to say wasted talent because somebody, some folks have fulfilled their destiny. Some people have fulfill their purpose. Some people have tapped into the potential of what they were supposed to be and supposed to do and have gone on to do it. So I'm not going to say that it's wasted talent. I'm not going to say that it is wasted ability. I'm not going to say that it is wasted grace. I'm going to say that that's where you would find a lot of very talent. Their songs they never got written that we never heard. There are books that never got written, that never was penned, or they might have been penned, but never got published. There are leaders who never stepped up to lead, but were so comfortable in the comfort zone of just being a follower. See, the third servant, he buried his talent, probably went off somewhere, went fishing every day, uh, all day, every day, until the boss came back, until the boss came back on the scene, and the boss found out and saw that he was not working. Y'all remember that movie, In Life? <laughs> One of my favorite movies. That particular moment where Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence are sitting there, and, and they're picking the dirt preparing to make way for a railroad to come through Mississippi. And they're sitting there, and all of a sudden, Martin Lawrence, he, he takes his pick, hits it down in the ground, and he begins to take his shirt off. And he said, man, what, what are you doing, man? He said, man, it's too hot. He said, man, it's hot out here. It's too hot to be doing this kind of work, man. It's too hot. I'm about to take a break, man. It's hot. And so they get into a little squabble. And so Eddie Murphy decides to throw Martin Lawrence under the bus. Hey, boss, he ain't working. This is what the third servant who got one talent, this is what he was doing. He went out and just was doing whatever. And now the boss done show back up on the job site and he ain't working. He ain't doing anything. He ain't doing nothing to prove himself as an effective steward of the talent or the ability that he was given. How many people go to the job? How many people, how many employees, if you're in a supervisory position, how many employees do you know of? Don't need to talk, don't, don't need to call them out. Just think about this for a moment. How many employees go to work every day 
and do the absolute minimum. Just enough to keep them from getting fired. Oh my God. How many people go to work every day and do the absolute minimum? How many people are in positions at church? How many people are in a position at work? How many people are in positions in the church? And all they give is the absolute minimum. Now, the, the pastor might release you, might fire you from the position, but guess what? He can't fire you from church. He can't fire you from your spiritual work that we should be doing. He can't fire you from the spiritual work, but God can. Woo! Yeah, you don't want God to fire you. You, you may want pastor, you may want bishop, you may want the apostle, uh, you, you may want uh, the deacon, you may want somebody, uh, you may want uh, the owner, whoever, you may want somebody else to fire you, but let me tell you something, you don't want God to fire you. Because God will take that, that, that talent, that ability. I have, listen, I'm a firm, not just a firm believer. I am a firm example. I have had it done in my own life. I have literally sat on a gift, sat on a talent, sat on an ability that God has graced and given to me, sat on it because I felt like, I felt, man, they don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. They don't appreciate it. This is just me. Now, I, I don't know about nobody else. I, I can talk about me. I can tell you from my experience. Yeah, I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. I watched it. God said, okay. All right. Okay. And literally, I, I watched it move me out of, out of the way. It's almost like getting fired. But it's, it's, it's a lot worse getting fired by God because God will still give you. See, the gifts are without repentance. The gifts are given to you where God ain't going to strip you and take those gifts away from you. He's not going to take those talents and those abilities away from you. He's not going to strip you of that. But he will He will fire you to the point where he will, will sit you down somewhere and watch, let you watch somebody else operate in that gift and in that talent, in that ability, right in front of your face and show you the benefits. Show you. Oh, Rabbi Shanda. He will show you what you missing because of your stubbornness, because of your hard-headedness, because of your arrogance, because of your prideful self. He will sit you down and let you see right before your eyes somebody else get blessed for doing what you got the what you have that that gift that talent that ability to be doing and you sit there and you mumble gripe and complain and criticize oh man whoo man let me keep this thing going let me get up off here let me get up off here how many people they, do you know go to work every day and do do the absolute minimum yet they wonder why they never receive promotions yet they wonder why that they don't get that position that they applied for. And then they attribute their lack of achievement to the prejudice of their supervisor or boss. And then they go on and, and say, and talk about how it's always somebody else's fault, but never their own fault. They remember, I told you, that with that ability comes responsibility, and with that responsibility comes accountability. But see, you don't want to take the responsibility that you need to use what you got where you are right now. You don't want to accept that responsibility because you know God has graced you to do it. And so now... Uh, 
Now comes the accountability of you simply doing the bare minimum, and now you want to get promoted to do something that you should have already been doing before the promotion was made available that they could see that, yes, this person is capable, well capable of doing this. But you sit and you attribute the lack of advancement to the prejudice of the supervisor and the boss. And then you sit back and you start you start griping, mumbling, and complaining and talking about that it's always somebody. You, you had shift blame syndrome. You're always shifting the blame on somebody else but never shifting the blame that it is you, that it's your fault. Never accepting that responsibility that it, it was you that dropped the ball. Yet, you always saying it's somebody else's fault. Never mind. And yet the reality is that your failure to be promoted is simply because what you didn't do when the boss was not around. What you didn't do when the boss wasn't looking. That you only gave the absolute minimum. It reminds me of a scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14, uh, where God is going to judge everything that we do. Everything we do, whether good, bad, the ugly, the indifferent, even the things done in secret, God is going to judge each and every one of us for. So if you have agreed to work for a company and you purpose and you purposely don't give them your best efforts. Watch this. I'm 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 about I'm about to mess somebody up. I'm, let me let me let me take a commercial break. This refreshing thirst has been brought to you by Power Aid. Power Aid, one of my go-to drinks. Ecclesiastes 12, 14 says uh, that God is going to judge everything we do, whether good or bad, and even the things done in secret. And if you have, if you have, have applied and if you have, uh, uh, you have signed the contract, if you have signed the agreement, you ha have given these, this company, you have given this job, you have agreed to work for someone you have agreed to do something to the best of your ability to the best of your knowledge to the best of your talent to the best of your resources you've agreed but yet you purposely don't give them your best efforts you are simply planning evil because the Bible tells me in Psalms 64, 5 and 6, it says, it tells me that, that, that they encourage each other to do evil. They meet in secret to set their traps. He will never notice them here, they say. They keep a sharp lookout for opportunities of crime. They spend long hours with all their endless evil thoughts, and plans. In other words, that's all they said. They ain't trying to, they going to do the bare minimum, but they trying to set up everybody else to fail so that they can move on up the ladder. So they sitting there plotting all this evil. But on the other hand, on the flip side, let me give you the flip side. Because, see, I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't like being one side. I don't like leaving you with just one view. I like to give you a panoramic view. I like to give you a, a multi-view of what's going on. I don't want you to, to be, uh, I don't want you to have your blinders on and, and you miss what's outside of your blinders and you get blindsided and you don't see it coming. I, and, and I don't want you to get be, be caught up and be blindsided that you miss a blessing either. See, uh, another thought. On another note, let me give you the flip side. See, it is important 
Let me talk to my married folks out there. Let me talk to the married folks at Harvest Temple Church of Restoration. Let me talk to the married folks watching this broadcast. Let me talk to y'all for a minute. See, it's important what we do while we are away from our spouse. It's important what you do while you are away from your wife, husbands. It's important what you do while you're away from your husband, wives. See, I'm not talking about the obvious sins of adultery or uh, or or any other illicit behavior. No, I am. I'm, we, we get beat up and, and banged up enough about that. But I'm talking about this when when your spouse is not around. Let me give you an example. Uh, I'm talking about the little things that bless your spouse. Talk about the little things that blesses your spouse. See, for instance, uh, a perfect example for me. See, I, I'm, I can use me as the example. I'm going to use me as the example. Uh, 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 for instance, uh, when it comes to the awesome, the lovely, the beautiful, uh, the fine wife and the queen of this Dunn household, this Dunn castle. Uh, see, my wife and my queen, see, she likes to have the kitchen sink free of dishes. She don't like no dishes in the sink. She don't want no dishes in the sink. I don't care if it's from... The, the morning breakfast to, to the time that dinner's over and it's time to go to bed. My wife does not want no dishes in the sink. And so my mindset, my mindset used to be, and I'm, I'm, I'm a work in progress. Hello, somebody. She, gonna, she can tell you because I know she's watching this. I'm a work in progress. So I picked this up. The Lord dropped this on me. And then I didn't understand it at first. I just started doing it. And now I understand a lot better what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Why I do what I do. It's because it's these little things that bless my spouse. So what I do is I try to make it a habit. Because, see, before I renewed my mind, <laughs> hello, somebody, before I changed my, think, my thinking and my thought process, before I changed my perception of this, my mental image, I used to always just say, man, listen, you know, if, if, if dinner's over with and, and I'm the last one eating, I, man, I would be like, look, look, I, I, and I'm tired, I'm ready to go to bed, knowing I got to get back up in the morning. You know, I, I would just take my dish and I would sit, I would sit it in the fresh, uh, the fresh, soapy, hot water and let it soak. And I would use the excuse and use the excuse. I know I'm telling off on myself. I'd use the excuse, man, listen. Let that soak, and I'll get it tomorrow. i get it in the morning when I get up. Guess what? I get up the next morning. I get going. I get busy. I get up, and I might be running uh, running a little behind schedule to get to work. I might be running a little bit behind schedule, trying to take care of some things, uh, 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 church business, church administration stuff. I might fall behind, and, and the dish sits in that sink, and, and it's still in there soaking. And now it's lunchtime. And now lunchtime's passed. Now it's dinner time. And now we back at it again. And now I got another dish that I'm getting ready to put because nobody, hello somebody. That was my old mindset. But now I realize that keeping the kitchen, keeping the sink dish free is blessing not only is it blessing my spouse, but I've learned that it is a sign of order to my wife. And so even when I'm home and, I'm, and it's my day off, I either am washing every dish 
everything that I, I cook and mess up and everything that I give the kids because it's summer break, uh, I I have them to wash their they dishes. I have them to rinse off their dishes. Whatsoever the case may be, I'm either washing the dishes or we putting the dishes and loading up the dishwasher and, and preparing to run the dishwasher. I have learned and I am yet learning. Not only does this bless my spouse, not only does, is this a sign of order to my wife, but it is also a way for me to honor my wife. You see, the Bible tells me in Proverbs 27 and 18, it says, if you care about your orchid, if you care about the orchard, you'll enjoy its fruit. If you honor your boss, you will be honored. Proverbs 27, 18. If you care about the orchard, if you tend to the fruit trees, if you tend to the orchard, you take the care. If you take the time, you will enjoy its fruit. If you don't care nothing about the tree, you ain't gonna care nothing about the fruit. If you don't care nothing about the tree, don't be sitting there complaining about how bad the fruit come out. Don't be sitting there talking about how how, how the fruit ain't ain't growing. How the fruit should be should be should be it should be blooming and banging by now. What's going on? And you're only doing the bare minimum. See, in other words. If you care for your orchard, you'll enjoy its fruit. If you honor your boss, you will be honored. You see, for me and my household, as for me and this uh, kingdom that God has blessed us with, see, when my wife comes home from work, things in the kingdom, because... What I'm doing to honor her, what I'm doing that uh, uh, that is a sign of order to her, what I'm doing uh, that this little thing that I do on a constant daily basis now is a blessing to her. Not only is it just a blessing to her, but things are quite well in the kingdom because the queen has been honored. And when the queen has been honored, that makes this king one happy dude. Hello, somebody. So why do you think in Matthew's chapter 25, why do you think that the master gave the three servants uh, these talents and then turned around and left them? Why did he do that? It was a test that he wanted to see what would they do if he wasn't around. I share this in a, lead, in, in a leadership class. If you really want to know, and, and this ain't just for church. I need y'all to hear this. This ain't just for church. This is for all aspects uh, when, when dealing with leadership, when dealing with management. You really want to know what a person is capable of. If you really want to know what a person is made of, you really want to know what's going on with, with certain people. You really want to know how they would act. Give them a little authority. Put them in authority and you will see. If you really want to know, that is the test. How you want, you want to test some leaders? You want to test management? Give them a little authority and watch what happens. It's either going to do one or two things. It's either going to go to their head and, and they're going to go all the way out left field and right field. Or it, they're, going, it, they're going to show you that that, that, that that ability, that talent is down in them. And they're going to show you, they're going to prove to you that they can handle that role. They can handle the job. You really want to see what, what, what's, what's in somebody? Give them a little authority and watch what happens. See, how do you perform 
on the job? How do you perform at work? How do you perform uh, in in the ministry? How do you do? Are you doing the bare minimum or are you giving it your best based upon your ability every time? How are you performing when your boss or supervisor is not around to see what you do? Remember, the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. Point number three. I got four more and then I'm, I'm out your way. Point number four. Maximize. Maximizing opportunities is a decision. Point one, use what you got. Point number one, use what you got. Point number two, what are you doing when the boss is not looking? Point number three, maximizing opportunities is a decision. For you see, the first two servants in, in Matthew 25, uh, they decided to maximize the opportunities they were given. Whereas the third servant who was given that one talent did not maximize his opportunity, did not maximize the opportunity they, that, they, that, that, that he was given. See, there's a difference when you see this. See, there are defining moments in our careers as well as in our lives where we are given and we take or we seize the opportunity to change our destiny. In other words, it's already laid out. The course is already set to where it would take you <clears throat> it would take you five years to reach your to, to reach your destiny, to reach the destination. Or rather, you go around the long way. You go through all of the heartaches and heartbreaks. You go through all of this. You go through the school and then you go through the school, the university, uh, the council of hard knocks. <clears throat> you go through all that where it was supposed to take you uh, 10 years. Now it has taken you 40 years. To where you was giving defining moments. And you decide to deviate. You just you decided. See, maximizing opportunities is a decision. And you're given opportunities, you're given moments throughout your life to either take <clears throat> and seize the moment, seize the opportunity, and change your destiny. And really, it's not really, in a sense, it's not really changing the destiny. What it is, like I said, God is redeeming the time to where you done played around and where you it took you 40 years to get to where he told you it was going to take you 10. See, he's redeeming that time now and putting all that into the timeline. I told you, all things work together for the good of them that love God and to those that are called according to his purpose. He takes all the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, the accomplishments, the ups, the downs, the setbacks, the setups. He puts all that into the timeline. He weaves and works all that into your timeline because I told you, he's already stepped into your end and he knows and knows and sees your end result. He knows your end result where we are living from our beginning to get to the end result. He's already seen it and come backwards. Got to watch, watch Avengers Endgame. You gotta watch uh, uh, Avengers: Infinity War. You understand what I'm talking about? Uh, it's a very good spiritual movie. If you know how to see God in everything, I guarantee you. But see, He's redeeming the time, and 
you now you need to seize the opportunity where he's redeemed that time to now alter the course back the way that he had already planned it in the first place. So I believe that the first two servants were very happy to be given the opportunity to prove themselves to the master. They seized the moment and the opportunity that they had been given. See, not only did they seize it, but I believe they did exactly what Galatians 6 and 10 says, uh, when it says that as we have the opportunity, let us do good to not have to folk, not to the folk we like, not to uh, the folk we get along with, not to, uh, uh, to the people uh, that we don't know, but, but, but from a distance, uh, we're going to do good to them uh, because we really don't know all, a lot about... No, 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 no. Galatians 6 and 10 says that as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people. Do good to all humanity, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And then Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16 says and tells us to be very careful. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And Colossians chapter 4, verse 5 and 6 says to be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. As, un, as unbelievable as it may sound, there are some people who sleep away their God-given opportunities, whether it be in a bed or a cubicle. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 5 says that a wise youth makes hay while the sun shines. But what a shame to see a lad who sleeps away his, uh, his hour of opportunity. That same scripture a little bit with a little different take can be found in Ephesians chapter 5, 15 and 17th verse. And it tells us, so be careful how you act. These are difficult days. Don't be fooled. Be wise. Make the most of every opportunity you have for doing good. It was Francis Bacon who said, uh, Francis Bacon who was uh, an English philosopher, a scientist, a statesman, a lawyer, an author, who said, a wise man will make more opportunities than he finds. Francis Bacon said that a wise man will make more opportunities than he finds. What opportunities did you maximize today? What opportunities will you maximize tomorrow? What opportunities will you seize the moment and maximize in your life? What opportunities will you maximize on this journey while moving towards your destiny? Point number four. Point number four. Pursue every opportunity with excellence. Pursue every opportunity. As the scripture has said, a wise man will make more opportunities than he finds. As the scripture has said, don't be fooled, be wise. Make the most of every opportunity you have for doing good. And while you're making the most of every opportunity that you have to do good, do it with excellence. You see, the first two servants 
were determined to make their master proud and exhibit a spirit of excellence in what they did. I know we have heard this in a sense of church cliche. We've heard this uh, uh, to do things in a spirit of excellence. I'm going to break I'm going to break that down uh, so that you can better understand. You see, God is, is looking for excellence in effort. Even the most seemingly meaningless task should be vigorously pursued. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 16 and verse 10 that if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And Matthew 5 and verse 16 says, and tells us to let our light so shine before men that they may see your moral excellence. This is the Amplified Bible. That they may see your moral excellence and your praise worth, noble and good deeds, and recognize and honor and praise and glorify God your Father who is in heaven. The Bible says also in Luke chapter 4, verse 6, it says, uh, To you I will give all this power and authority and their glory, all their magnificent, excellent, preeminence, dignity, and grace, for it has been turned over to me, and I give it to whoever I will. The Bible goes on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse, 10, verse 20, For the kingdom of God consists of and is based on not talk, but power, moral power, and excellence of soul. Excellence is one of the character traits that as believers we are to vigorously pursue. We are to pursue opportunities with excellence. First, second Peter. First, no, first Peter? No, second Peter, chapter one, verse five. Uh, second Peter, chapter one, verse five, says, uh, for this very reason, uh, adding your diligence to the divine promises. Employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue, excellence, resolution, Christian energy, and in exercising virtue, develop knowledge, intelligence. I want to read that from, uh, let me read that from the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation of 2 Peter Chapter 1, verse 5 says this, In view of all things, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge. In other words, let me give you three quotes about excellence that I feel should be a part of your thought process while moving towards your destiny. I want you to uh, put these into your mental hard drive. I want you to put these three quotes into your mental hard drive. And I want you to realize that, uh, as we said, excellence is one of the character traits that as believers we're to vigorously pursue. Let me give you these three quotes about excellence. Put these in your mind. Put these along with that statement I told you to write down. Put these along with it. Excellence is not a skill. It's an attitude. Excellence is not a skill. It is an attitude. Perry Paxton says that excellence 
is in the details. Excellence is in the details. When you hear someone say to do something, do something in the gift and in the ability and the talent and the grace that you have been given, do it in and do it with a spirit of excellence. You are to be doing it. You are to be your excellence should be in the detail because Perry Paxton goes on to say that excellence is in the details. Give attention to the details and excellence will come. One of the ultimate famous legendary coaches of college basketball, Rick Pitino, Rick Pitino says that excellence is the unlimited ability to improve the quality of what you have to offer. Let me say that again. Rick Pitino says that excellence is the unlimited ability to improve the quality of what you have to offer. Which leads me to point number five. Point number five, never compare your situation. Never compare your opportunities with that of others. For you see, in Matthew 25, uh, you will find that the servant who got the two talents the servant who got two talents complained about why he didn't get five talents like the first servant. And the second servant was happy with what he got. See, nowhere, nowhere do they complain. Nobody complains about the one who was given the one talent. Nobody complains uh, and compares their situation as far as, oh, I got Two, and you got one, and he got five. Why is that? Nowhere in this scripture will you find this. Nowhere will you find anybody complaining about why they didn't get five talents. God gives us based upon our capacity. He gives us. You know, like the songwriter says, he don't put no more on you than what you can bear. It's all about your capacity, what you can hold, your capacity that is based upon the ability, the talent or the talents that God has given to you. See, everybody was cool. Everybody was I with what they got. And the second servant was happy with what he got and he proved himself worthy of the trust he was given by doubling what he was given. He doubled what he was given. Do you find yourself comparing yourself, uh, comparing your situation, comparing the opportunities that have been given to you? Uh, do you find yourself uh, talking about and comparing yourself with others, uh, comparing yourself with fellow employees, comparing yourself with friends, comparing yourself with, uh, uh, with, uh, just people in general. Do you find yourself comparing and complaining that you receive some, that, that they receive something that you didn't? Are you comparing and complaining uh, about the opportunities that somebody else got that you didn't get? Well, you see, the Bible says in Galatians 6, uh, verse 4 and 5, it tells us to that we should examine our own actions. And then we can be proud of our own accomplishments without comparing ourselves to others. That we, uh, we, we, we should examine 
our actions. Examine your motives. Why? What's the motive going on in your heart? Why do you do what you do? Why do you say what you say? Examine that and assume your own responsibility. In other words, the Amplified Bible says this. The Amplified Bible says this in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 4. It says, but let every person carefully scrutinize and examine and test his own conduct and his own work. In other words, simply saying that you are accountable for your actions. You are accountable for what you do. You are accountable for what you don't do. You are accountable for how you act. You are accountable for how you react. You are accountable for how you respond. You are accountable for what you say. You are accountable for what you don't say. You can't blame nobody. No, 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 nobody. You can't blame nobody. You can, you can shift the blame all day long, but you can't blame nobody for your actions but yourself. You see, you're the master of your own ship. You're the creator of your own destiny. You are the continual, you are to continually inspect what you're doing and how it lines up with his word, how it lines up with his plan for your life. Jeremiah 29 11. How's that lining up? See, when you know you've done the best job possible, when you know that you have given your maximum and not your minimum, when you know you've given your best that day, when you know you've given your best, there's no need to compare yourself to anybody else. When you know you have done your very best, when you have given your maximum ability, when you've given your maximum potential, there's no need to compare yourself to anybody else. See, the Bible says in Galatians 6 and 4 of the New Living Translation, it says, pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. You see, you will never succeed in life by comparing yourself to others. You will never succeed in life by complaining about why someone else was given something that you weren't. Actually, it's a sin to covet your neighbor's possessions. And if you spend too much time, if you spend too much time, if you spend as much time, let me rephrase that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you spend, if you spend as much time sharpening your skill set, don't see, see, don't don't be sitting there complaining and griping and comparing and talking about the tools that you've been given. But if those tools that you have been given, if you would take the time and skillfully sharpen those tools, you take the time and you master how to use those tools. If you spend as much time sharpening your skill set as you do talking about others and what they got and what you didn't get, you'll soon find that the others are talking about you and what you got. When you learn to take that time, take that energy, off of talking about what they got and what you didn't get, how they got promoted, you didn't get promoted, how you are just given the minimum, ain't given the maximum. But if you take that time and that energy and invest it in sharpening your skill set, sharpening the tools that you were given, use what you got where you are right now. You will soon find out that the naysayers, the haters, the criticizers, all those folks now, they're talking about what you got and what they ain't got. Which leads me to point number six. 
Point number six, don't bury your opportunities. Maximize your opportunities. Maximize those opportunities that you are given. Maximize them. Don't bury the opportunities. Because that is exactly what the third servant did in Matthew 25. He was given one talent. He was given one responsibility. He was given one thing to do. He was given one ability. And he didn't even dare to put any creative thought towards investing in that creative. Wow. He just went and buried it. Went and buried it. He was lazy. He made excuses. He questioned authority. He was afraid to do what he was asked and failed to increase what he was given. Plus, he went and he buried the talent that he was given. And the Bible tells me in Matthew chapter 25, verse 18, it says, But he who had received the one talent went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. And you're probably saying to yourself right now that you would never, i never do something like that. I would never bury the master's talent. Well, let me ask you this. Before we get off of this thought, before we get off of this, Perhaps we should pause for a moment, have another another power aid break before I drop this on you. Perhaps we should really think about this. Perhaps we should really think this through. Before we sit and say, oh man, God gave me a talent. Man, if God gave me a talent, I wouldn't dare go sit on it. If God has given you the ability to write meaningful words, I want to know, have you, have you used what you got right where you are and began to use it by writing a blog, writing a book? If not, you've buried that talent. If God has given you the ability to lead and you are not leading, you're not in leadership, you're not leading, whether it be on the job, whether it be in the church, whatsoever the case may be, God has given you the ability to lead and you're not leading, then you are simply burying your talent. If God has given you the ability to teach his word and you're not teaching then you have buried your talent if God gives you money and you have nothing to show for it other than this huge large humongous debt then you have buried your talent I can go on and on and on the list goes on it goes on and on and on. But the real point is simply this. If you have buried your talent, if God has given you an ability, God has given you a talent, God has given you potential to do something, to make a difference, to make an impact, just by simply using what you got right where you are right now. And using it and doing it in a spirit of excellence. And you are taking advantage. You're maximizing your opportunities. Rather than burying your opportunities. If you are burying them, I need you to stop it right now. I need you to go dig them up. I need you... I declare and decree that you will dream again. I declare and decree that you will have visions. I declare and decree that you will write them down, that you will make it plain. I declare and decree that every day that you will speak those dreams, you will speak those visions into existence. Whatsoever God has given you to do to make a difference, to make an impact, 
to leave a footprint, to leave a legacy. I declare and decree that it begins and it will start right now. You see, whatever God has given to you, whether it be a talent or talents, it's time for you to use what you got right where you are, right now. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7, that this is my life work, helping people understand and respond to this message. It came as a sheer gift to me, a real surprise, God handling all the details when it came to presenting the message to the people who had no background in God's way. I was the least qualified. This is the Apostle Paul writing this to the church at Ephesus. He says, I was the least qualified of any of the available Christians. God saw to it that I was equipped. But you can be sure that it had nothing to do with my natural abilities. Your gifts, your abilities, your talent, your money, is it's all from God. And what you do with it is your gift to him. Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 11, it says that all these gifts, achievements, abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions to each person individually exactly as he chooses. What are you doing with what you got? What are you doing with the talent that God has given to you? What are you doing with the ability that God has given to you? What are you doing with that ability? Are you being responsible? Because you are responsible for that gift, that talent, that ability. Whether you invest in it and, and, and God gets a return, or rather you are sitting down and you're burying it and you ain't doing nothing with it, then he's going to show you the benefits that you could have had, that you could have been a part of. He's going to show you the impact, the difference that you could have made with your gift, your talent, your ability. He's going to show you because you're responsible. And along with that responsibility comes accountability. We are all accountable for the gift, the talent, the resource, the thing that God has given to us. We are accountable. Which leads me to my last and final point. Point seven, how to get the promotion with the benefits. See, all three of the servants were given a test. Two of the three passed the test. Two of the three were blessed with increased benefits. But the third failed the test and literally went to hell for it. Not trying to offend your sensitivities. But that's exactly where he ended up in the scripture. Someone once defined hell as the day the person you became meets the person you could have become. And it, it possibly could be a situation like that. Because I'm telling you, I've done it. I've, I've, I've done it. I, I've, I've I've sat down on a gift, on a talent, on an ability, and I've literally watched someone else reap the benefit. I've watched God bless somebody else right before my eyes because of my pride, because I felt like that 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 whoever, whatever didn't deserve it. I felt like that they they wasn't appreciated, appreciative of it. But that's not that wasn't my call. That's not that's not my call. That's God's call. That's God's role. God gave me a talent. God gave me an ability. God gave me a gift. And along with it, you don't know. You don't realize that with that talent and with that ability that you might be sitting on, it is tied and connected to somebody else. It is tied and connected to somebody else 
being released and causing them to move towards their destiny. Sadly, like the third servant, there are way too many people who are placing limitations in their life. And I want to tell you directly, take the limits off. I've often said that the only limitation that you face in life are those that are self-inflicted, self-induced, self-maintaining, self-sustaining, and, of course, self-defeating. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus says, uh, as far as possibilities go, everything is possible for the person who believes. Who do you believe that you are? Who do you believe? Who do you say? Are you telling yourself that you are? Now listen, if you're sitting there telling you, you sitting there saying you, 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 based upon your expertise, based upon your gift, your talent, you're the greatest, you, 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 you are, you're a goat at what you do, but you ain't putting it into action. It's like you just run around out here just chasing the wind. Swearing that you're gonna you're gonna get a hold of it and you're gonna catch it. It's just it's just a dream. You, 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 it's just a dream that is meaningless. You see, this particular scripture in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, this scripture, when Jesus says, as far as possibilities go, everything is possible for the person who believes. I want to tell you right now, I believe in your dream. I believe in your vision. I believe in your creativity. I believe that you will accomplish. I believe in you. I believe that you will do and you will tap into not just a minimal, but you will tap into your full maximum potential of greatness. I believe in you. But you see, this is a scripture that ignites my faith. It stirs me to new levels of expectation. Everything is possible for the person. The person, you, me, the person who believes. There is no limitation to our manifestation. The Message Bible says it like this. The Message Bible, Jesus said, if somebody hit Jesus with the yeah, if 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 you can do it, if if you can if you can make it happen, Jesus said, if there are no ifs among believers, anything can happen. All things are possible. Anything, no matter how illogical to the natural mind, can happen in our lives. As we exercise our faith and believe, the scripture also says there are there is nothing impossible to those who believe. Luke chapter 1 verse 37 says, For with God nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. God literally spoke us into existence. God literally spoke the world that we live in into existence. Every day that you declare something, that you are speaking something about who you are, about what you are, about where you are, you frame your world around you. The same one who promotes you is also the one who gave you abilities and gifts. The Bible says in Psalm 75, 6 and 7, For not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south come promotion and lifting up. But God is the judge. He puts down one and lifts up another. Not only does God... Does your promotion come from God? 
But everything that you have and everything you are comes from him. What are you doing with what you got? I want you to think about it. Are you moving towards your destiny? Think about it. My time is up. I thank you all for yours. This has been an awesome lesson. Listen, go back. Go back. Get the scriptures. Check them out. Read them for yourself. Don't just take me at my word. Don't just take me at my memory. Go back. Read the scriptures. Get an understanding for yourself. Go back and check it out. And I know that this will be a blessing to you. Listen. In the meantime, in between time, till the next time, may the Lord watch between you and me while we are absent one from another, but never, ever, ever, ever absent from his presence because the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. I say shalom baraka, peace and blessings be upon each and every one of you till we meet again uh, next Sunday right here for the Harvest Broadcast. Listen, ah, ah, I just want to... Uh, I just want to make mentions that the website is back up and running. We have finally, finally got that going. Uh, it is back up, www.christrestored.net. Check us out. We're also on YouTube. There is a, uh, there is a, a tab on the website you can click on uh, that is linked to the Harvest Broadcast uh, YouTube page. Check us out. Check us out. HTC uh, Church family, uh, HTC fam, y'all know the drill now. I know we was uh, using the PayPal link uh, for our tithes and our offering. Now you can go back uh, and you can go back using uh, the, we've modified and we've uh uh, did some some uh, upgrades to uh, the donation button. You can use that donation button, and when you click on it, there is a tab. Now you can go down and you can click tides and offering, uh, and there are other tabs that are associated with that now. So the website is back up and running. I know it's backwards behind me, but it is www.christrestored. Net. Uh, check us out. Look us up. Uh, till next time, in between time. Listen, my time is up. I thank you all for yours. Thank each and every one of you all for taking the time to come and hang out with little old me right here in Chesapeake Beach, Maryland, right here on Facebook Live. Love each and every one of you all with the love of the Lord. Uh, if you got prayer requests, uh, you can send your prayer requests to Harvest Temple Ministries at gmail.com. You can go to the website. Uh, there is a tab, person to pray for tab. You can click on that tab, send your prayer request uh, uh, that way. Uh, check it out. Go to the website. Check it out. Uh, Till next time, catch y'all on the flip side. Love each and every one of y'all. Y'all have a great and wonderful evening. Love y'all. Bye-bye.